almost got hit by a car. So this is part two of my relocating to Boston videos. If you haven't watched my first video, you might want to start with that one because I give you a lot of information on where to go, how the transportation works, how the highways work, uh, and where do you want to be. And I focused on that video in the northwest suburbs of Boston. In this one, we're going to talk about the west, about the south, and so much more. So stick around. Let's start with the weather. Today is February 28th. It's a winter day, but as you can see, I'm in Lexington Center and it's sunny and it's pretty warm. For the last three years, really, we didn't have much of a snow or very cold winters. The weather here is, it is cold and snowy in the winter. It is cold and rainy in the spring, humid and very hot in the summer. It can be cool, but mostly it's warm, sunny in the fall. I have to say that many of my relocation clients, after they stay here for one or two years, I ask them, how are the winters? How are you acclimating? Especially people who come from warmer states. And they say, you know what? It's better than we expected. <laughs> Make sure to watch my videos about the weather in Boston and about how to prepare for the Boston winters. Here are the most popular towns west of Boston. And I will start with the most affordable to the least affordable. The city of Waltham has a population of about 66,000. It is 11 miles from downtown Boston, a historically industrial town with the American Watch Company and Boston Manufacturing Company. Throughout history, Waltham is continuing the tradition by being the home of many major companies like Raytheon, PowerXL, and Constant Contact. A number of state highways are within a few miles and Waltham is easily accessible. Like I-95 is right there in Waltham with three exits. It also has two commuter rail stops and Bentley and Brandeis universities are here. Waltham Senior High School is ranked 253rd in Massachusetts according to US News High School rankings. And the average sale price in Waltham is 866,000. This is the most affordable one west of Boston and within 95 loop. We have helped more than 100 families relocate to Massachusetts and all of them told me they want to live outside of the city of Boston and most say they want to live inside the 95 loop. To get more information about the 95 loop, watch my previous video. I'll link it in the description. Watertown has a population of about 36,000. It is about eight miles from downtown Boston. It had a huge growth in the last five years of new construction, rental properties, as well as growth of home prices. Watertown borders Soldiers Field Road and the Massachusetts Turnpike major arteries into downtown Boston. Watertown is served by several buses and it is easy and simple to get to Harvard Square from almost anywhere in Watertown. The high school is ranked 131st in Massachusetts according to US News High School rankings and the average sale price of a single family is $1,061,000. Also, I want to say how humbled and grateful I am to all of you for watching, subscribing and commenting. I'm doing this for you and it brings me great joy when somebody calls and says that they watched my videos and they helped a lot. And if moving to Massachusetts, please reach out. My team and I will be happy to help you out. We helped over 100 families relocate to Massachusetts in the last few years, and we'll do the same for you. The town of Arlington has been quite a popular destination for new families, not only because it is close to Cambridge and Boston, but it also has many lakes and beaches and has that urban suburban mixed feeling nailed. The Arlington High School is ranked as 36th in Massachusetts. The very popular Minuteman Bikeway runs through Arlington Center and is a very fun way to spend warm weekend afternoons. It connects residents to Bedford, Lexington, the Alawife Red Line Station, and Arlington's population is around 45,000. Average sale price of a single family home is 1,225,000. There are many buses that can take you places. Route 2 and 3 are close by and you can get to I-93 fast. About 8 miles from the center of Boston is Belmont, a very small bedroom community with two commuter rail stations. Many buses that take you to Cambridge through the neighboring communities and high school that has been ranked as 8th in Massachusetts this year. Belmont average sale price is 1,650,000. Belmont is somewhat removed from most highways besides Route 2, and usually you have to drive to either Route 95 in Waltham or Mess Pike in Watertown. 
It has a population of about 28,000. Belmont is famous for its excellent schools and historic homes. It's rare to find a new construction home here. If you find one, buy it as soon as you can. The city of Newton is made of 13 villages. It is very large, so large in fact, that it has two high schools. Newton North is ranked as 43rd in Massachusetts and Newton South is 37th. It is about seven miles from downtown Boston with a population of 89,000. It is the most populated city on my list so far. There are many highways in Newton, Route 9, Hammond Pond Parkway and Mass Pike and has stops on the Green Line D branch. That's a light rail that runs above the ground. The average cell price for a single family in Newton is 1,960,000. Cambridge has a population of about 118,000, making it the fourth largest in Massachusetts behind Boston, Worcester, and Springfield. And of course, Harvard University and MIT are here, as well as many other colleges, many biotech and tech companies. The city continues to be home to many startups. Museums, concert halls, theater, and a lot is happening in Cambridge. Cambridge has the commuter rail stop in Porter Square, Lichmere Station on the Green Line of the Subway, and Elwife Porter, Harvard Central, and Kendall Square MIT stations on the Red Line of the Subway. Cambridge is a very bike-friendly and walkable city. It is about three miles from downtown Boston, and Cambridge Ringe and Latin High School is ranked 94th in Massachusetts. Average sale price in Cambridge is 2,600,000. Now, if you're shocked to see the average price, let's not forget that single-family homes in Cambridge are large historical estates. I don't know when you'll be watching this video, but the prices might be very different then. Make sure to reach out to me for an update. With a population of about 64,000, Brookline is overwhelmingly wealthy. Average sale price is 2.8 million. The northern part of Brookline, roughly north of the D-line tracks, is urban in character and is highly walkable and transit rich. The overall density of Brookline, which also includes suburban districts, and grand estates south of the D-Line is still higher than that of many of the largest cities in the United States. Brookline is served by the CND branches of the MBTA's Green Line trains. Brookline High School is 35th in Massachusetts. I have many videos on this channel about all the towns I talked about, so make sure you take the time to go deeper and learn more. Now, what's happening to the south of Boston? Well, Boston extends to the south quite a lot, with such Boston neighborhoods as Dorchester, Mattapan, and Hyde Park. But beyond that, we have Dedham, Quincy, and Milton. Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when my next video comes up, showing you these three towns, as well as some towns on the North Shore.